So welcome. Um, welcome to um, service operations for implementation specialists. My name's Chris Shakespeare. I'm part of our leading practices group. Um, so a lot of the content that you'll see from that team is published out onto things like now create. Um, so you'll find a, a lot of those assets um, there. So a little bit um, safe harbor. Um, probably won't be jumping into too many forward looking statements, but just in case there are, um, just be aware that we're going to present this and as a sort of safe harbor. We do have a whole range of these webinars and meetups going. Um, please um, look into what we have available, see the schedule, there's a, a QR code there. And yeah, so we've got lots of exciting uh, things going on. And this will, there's a range of these presentations by various ServiceNow experts on helping you deploy products and achieve value faster on those. So yeah, keep a look out for what's coming. Okay, as I mentioned, in terms of housekeeping, we do have time for Q&A. Um, please log them into the Q&A and I'll do my best at the end to work through those. Um, this presentation is being recorded and it will be shared out on community and uh, hopefully um, we'll be able to share a survey at the end to get your feedback. Always appreciate feedback coming through. Um, it's the only way that we can improve what we're doing and to uh, help make you more successful. So yeah, always appreciate feedback both on these webinars and also I mentioned things like now great with feedback on there goes straight to the teams which develop that content. So always appreciate feedback there as well. So that's sort of the housekeeping out of the way. What are we going to talk to about today? Well, really, we're going to jump into what is service operations, um, scoping of it, um, a bit around the recommended implementation sequence, how it fits into global sales framework and some of the work that's going on to uh, look at that. Um, resources, Q&A, and some of the key takeaways. So that, that's what we aim to cover with the next uh, half an hour, 40 minutes, with uh, some room for Q&A at the end. So what is service operations? Well, it's good to get a common uh, definition so we can all move forwards at the same pace. And for us at ServiceNow, it's, it's about bringing the technology services, uh, which are both the traditional IT services and the IT operations management together. And really it's about providing that foundation for your sort of digital first growth. And you can see women there, there are some key caveats, some key things that but really as objectives we want to achieve um, by doing it is we want to expand the technology services whilst reducing costs. We want to improve the employee experience and resiliency. You know, one of the things very important to businesses today is their employee satisfaction and reducing their time that they're spending on things which aren't associated with their core work and ultimately drive technology with best practices, optimized processes. You know, a digital first organization today no longer relies on having a central organization, the old IT, if you like, but rather having that distributed uh, amongst product teams. Um, so really for us, rather than thinking of an ITSM practice and an item practice as separate things, we want to really think about service operations as a practice and 
what that means and how we can help customers achieve that. So we'll take a, a little look underneath that a bit more um, before we get into more detail. So for us, you know, things which constitute service management are, you know, many things that you'd recognize today, you know, the core of things such as uh, instant problem, um, service catalog, you know, very traditional, but along with some of the many new things such as virtual agent, um, DevOps, uh, and I'll talk a bit about DevOps and where it fits into this, along with some machine learning technologies like predictive intelligence. And on the other side, you know, the traditional side of operations management around things like knowing, knowing your CIs, your desktops, your laptops, things like your firewalls and your data centers, but more importantly, as you move forwards, you know, the world of that is changing, cloud microservices becoming more prevalent, AI powered operations, so that you can remediate quicker, and, you know, discovery is moving into things like tagging. I'm just gonna just look at what the, the hand was for, just make sure we're all good. I believe we are. And so that's that's really what for us service operations is. And if you look at that, in many ways, none of that should be unfamiliar. It's about many things that we uh, deliver today, but it's more delivering it in a holistic package rather than just a single set of um you know, verticals, you know, I'm an item guy, I'm an ITSM guy. Yeah, it's more about thinking I'm a service operations guy moving forwards. So as I mentioned, you know, service operations, some of the key principles are, you know, it's not about new products, but it's maximizing those products that customers traditionally have. It's like, how do you bring those worlds together so that they uh, deliver value collectively rather than individually? If you do that, you're going to get a more satisfied customer and you're going to get better value ultimately out of those products. Delivery in phases, really important because it's so broad, it's so complex in terms of the span of both the customer estate that that covers, along with the product range from ServiceNow that's, that's covered. So breaking that deployment down to phases, both in terms of making delivery achievable and successful, along with the customer's ability to absorb the level of change that's going to be introduced by, by service operations is very key in that. Um, but to be able to do that, you really need to understand where the customer is, is at. You can't just drive in with, with a whole load of things because the customer might be mature in some areas and immature in others. So you want to ideally have everything moving at the same pace. So you ultimately move from a low maturity, low adoption point of view to a high maturity, high adoption. But if you do that without recognizing where the customer's at in certain areas, they'll have hotspots of capability, then ultimately you're not going to deliver and succeed with that customer. Also, as we'll see later on, is you have to tie off not just where the customer's at, but the objectives that that customer is trying to achieve as well. So. so just move that across and we'll uh, carry on. So I want to talk about scoping before we get into some of the nuts and bolts of what 
a recommended implementation sequence is because I think this really links into um, what I was saying earlier about understanding where the customer's at and delivering in phases. So it's very important to map the objectives, what the customer wants to achieve, to set of achievable, and I'd add to that, not just achievable, but measurable outcomes. Um, because that allows the customer to express the value they've achieved. And also in many ways, it gives permission to continue moving forwards. It, you know, having a great result, but not being able to explain it or demonstrate it, makes it very hard in business, especially with the macroeconomics we face today, to move forwards in many of these. So an example of you know, what we'd see in many of the so enterprise level objectives is reduce the cost of service. That's something that a CIO would probably recognize, you know, everything's costing too much, make it cheaper. Um, but how do you make that real in a more operational and functional sense? Well, functionally, it might be shift left, but operationally, it might be that centralization. It's having request and incident um, centralized rather than perhaps in disparate tools. Um, it's reducing those repetitive routine pieces of work. And it's ultimately trying to get work to the right person at the right time. So that's you know cost avoidance if you send work to the wrong person they have to spend time send it to the right person linking all those up into outcomes so they're great as objectives what are the outcomes that you're trying to ultimately measure uh, as we talked about you have to be measurable so in this case reduction in having disparate tools um, reducing the time to fulfill so that's both you know, how much effort it took and how much time people have to wait for things. Making incidents, just reduction time to resolve and, and ultimately the time inherent in that effort and reducing your case volume. Reducing case volume is always an interesting one in that you, you can keep a stable case volume, but if you are automating more of the the effort then you know that's driving you to reduce your cost of service and ultimately rationalization increase the it spend efficiency all bubbles up to a set of enterprise outcomes which are um you know you're having to spend uh, redirected to cover new investment you've improved your it sam efficiency you know, you can send time and money potentially back to your organization by having a clear set of objectives and outcomes which relate to that first initial objective. And in this case, it's all tied together with having ServiceNow as the, the glue to help you achieve those objectives and measure those outcomes. So, just rounding off some of the, the key things on uh, scoping, and then we'll look at the implementation sequence is, you know, whenever you're scoping, and I do this, is it's always important to understand what the vision is and the strategic drivers within the organization are. And once you have those, then having clarity around those objectives allows you to look at measurable outcomes and ultimately get a set of functional objectives. You shouldn't lead, you should always lead by those and not lead by the technology. So the solution it should be defined by the objectives and outcomes that you're trying to achieve. So once you pin down the outcomes and objectives, the solution should be geared to supporting those and having the right people in place to do that and ultimately being able to measure what you're doing, that demonstration of success. Is your trajectory and your velocity correct for moving forwards? And ultimately, have you got a sequence that's deliverable, um, you can demonstrate success on and is absorbable 
by the the customer. So that governance ability to absorb change are as key as all the, the technical problems you'll see coming through. So I mentioned recommended implementation sequence. So this is a piece of work that the leading practices team put together along with uh, a range of people, the product teams, our customer success organization, and what the purpose of the recommended implementation sequences are, is really there to help drive an informed discussion. So it's never going to be the perfect thing for every customer, but what it should allow to do is frame a discussion so that you can take this essentially as a template and then build out your own journey, your own story that has some supporting evidence as to why that's correct for you. And I've broken this down, but you can see it, it's a relatively complex picture. There's a lot going on. It's available on Now Create as an editable document and not just for service operations. There are a range of others as well. So if you're looking for risk or item or whatever, you'll find similar recommended implementation sequences. What we're going to do today is really pick through and just talk through each of the five columns you can see there, the foundation, the crawl, walk, run, and fly stages. And the purpose of having those is very much to try and recognize the fact that you have to break down the effort, break down the sequence to something that builds on each, each, of, each step and allows that demonstrable success as we go through. Before we start anything, um, but we always recommend there are a range of things that should be done. Um, and you can see those. Those are not necessarily unique to this recommended implementation sequence with perhaps maybe step one, but many of those, you know, knowing the outcomes we've talked about, you know, what's the solution? How are you going to calculate your value? What's the program look like? Have you got your governance in place? which includes the communication. Have you got good data? Um, you know, I lost count of the number of customers which said, yep, we've got great data, um, right to the point when you looked at the data. So yeah, having, having some of those foundational parts in place is really key. And ultimately, you know, there's a number of things which are gonna make this an easier exercise Having executive sponsorship, somebody who's engaged can break down those internal barriers, being realistic about what you're trying to do. You know, you've done the steps what you needed to do beforehand. Um, you know what the best practices are, and there's a wealth of information out those. And you've got the necessary organization in place for, for people with the skills and um, to deliver it both in terms of technology, the organization and the delivery aspects. So let's just jump into foundation and we'll walk through each of those, each of those areas. And you can see that, you know, one of the things what we're really trying to do with foundation is once you've done that, you've got those base core processes in place that's going to get rid of your legacy system, get you onto baseline service now implementation. It's not necessarily going to be optimized for the business, but it's a solid, stable baseline that you can then continue and to, to build out from. And, you know, typical success measures are, you know, average time to resolve MTTR. You know, have you managed to get your high priority incidents in control? Um, how many incidents are being resolved on first assignment? Are, are you playing ping pong with an incident or is it going to the right people at the right time? Similar with, with requests and having knowledge in place to do that. Um, one of the things that I sometimes see as well with some customers is you get the foundation in place and some things change is 
actually it takes longer to do things. You, know, you might have more pro high priority things. That's not necessarily because of you've changed systems, but it's because you're having more of an enforced process in place. So you've got more process discipline, which actually is show a, showing a more truer representation of actual performance than perhaps the legacy system that you moved from was. So don't necessarily be afraid to see some of those indicators go the wrong way, but having the knowledge of what they're doing is the thing that's gonna help you drive forwards. So let's just talk about what we see in there. So we're in there really to facilitate your foundation, incident and major incident. Um, major incident in itself is a separate process to, to incident management. Um, not all organizations are always necessarily ready for major incident, but since it's so closely coupled, we would recommend that. Knowledge, especially for the agent persona at this point, um, is key. And having the organization to maintain knowledge is nothing worse than having stale knowledge um, available for people because that leads to lack of trust um, with that. Change, you know, having normal standard emergency changes are all good, um, but ultimately later on you want to see uh, a movement towards uh, having change models, having more change risk, but that's not necessarily something that you're looking for at the early stages in WIM Foundation. Um, in terms of, we talked about reducing costs as maybe one of the types of outcomes you might look for. So that combination of having service catalog, request management and employee center to provide that self-service environment with sufficient items in the catalog to drive people to it, to use it, um, I think is key at that point. We are definitely recommending that, if, especially for new implementations, start off with service operations workspace. Um, it's in version three in Vancouver. It you know it's you know it's moved on significantly from from the, the early days. It's it's really that one pane of glass for service operation for both the ITOM operators and the ITSM agents. And if you got if you use an agent workspace, um, for sure move across. Um, and if you're not, if you're using base the, the core UI, then um, you know, pick a point in time, but it's right. But at least for first line agents to start moving across. Talked about the criticality I'm in data. So I'm in the CMDB, which is CSDM compliant, um, absolute necessity. Uh, although at this point, you, you're gonna have quite a small potentially CMDB in terms of data. But having tools such as Discovery and ACC to drive the population of those, maybe with some federated data through Service Graph, um, is going to help you both keep that data current and also make it available for those service management processes and reporting. There's, you know, being able to measure what's happening in your business so you can react and reflect um, is key. And one of the things that um, all customers have available to them, if even if we're on standard ITSM, is performance analytics for instant management. So I'd always recommend turning that on at this stage. You can't change anything, but it does give a more richer reporting. So once you've got your foundation in place, then it's really about starting to move forward. What can you do to improve the situation um, of that solid foundation? So this is more about providing not just self-service, but automation behind that self-service, um, providing improved operation excellence um, and the visibility of the IT landscape and some of success measures. So problem management didn't come in initially, in our view, in foundation, although in some respects, it's quite technically easy to implement. 
it requires both a level of data and a level of organizational maturity to to do that so but ultimately you are going to get value from bringing in things like root cause analysis with problem management to drive uh, down re repetition in incidents so decreasing your major incidents which are essentially the most costly ones um but you'll see because they're typically high impact um across the, the it estate and you know making sure you've got some focus on your both your end, end user customer satisfaction um as well so what does crawl look like well we talked a little bit about problem management um so bringing in problem management to help drive down the number of repetitions um is really going to pay dividends um things like walk-up experience walk-up experience now also helps uh, accommodate virtual teams in the, the latest iteration so you don't so it's not just necessarily the genius bar on site it's also having that experience available to virtual teams which i think is is great is a reflection of modern working um being able to get that feedback at the time with the surveys and assessments all good and having those um, mobile environments for both the end users and the agents to provide a more flexible set of working we're not all tied to desks not everybody wants to work that way you you provide greater satisfaction greater efficiency through there on the the opposite side asset in terms of hardware software so itsm itself comes with with uh, base so asset management that can be enhanced with having the item uh, ham and sam licensing as well so there is capabilities available in all the standard licenses but also driving those capabilities further with item i think is important and having that as well providing that richer environment from the operations management side you know what's happening in your cloud environment making sure that using service mapping to really give that top downwards view of uh, the services and bringing in things like the, the, the data certification have you got robust um data within there walk walk really in many ways start bringing in a more service orientated aspect um, we always try and encourage customers, even from the foundational stage, to think about services, especially from a service management point of view. Um, you still have, if you look at an instant form today in ServiceNow, you have business service, service offering, CI, categorization, all available to you, um, which is almost too much. Um, thinking about what your services are, what are most important services to your business, building out that as a discipline from early days really starts bring you into that service context. Because one of the things that's going to do is help you appreciate what's most important to the business, what it's costing you to the business and the performance of those services to the business. But it, it's not a switch it on journey. It's something that takes time uh, over a period. So things like service portfolio management along with digital portfolio management, especially DPM, where you've got other capabilities that you have available to you, such as APM, application portfolio management, the, the asset side um, coming up will be um, strategic portfolio management within the DPM environment. All those things are going to give you a, a richer, more complete view of a service environment. But there's a level of organizational change it will take from if you're very used to using categories and maybe a CI to go to a full blown service orientated environment. But that's quite a big step. So building that over a number of these phases, I think it's definitely a recommended approach for that. 
And you can see success measures in there. Um, you know, business service comes into there. Um, we talked a little bit about changes and how changes maybe start with a very simple um, model in foundations such as standard normal and emergency move into more change model um, perspective later on and also enhance risk assessments. Um, they come through also in the, the success measures. One of the things that's not in, in here and deliberately so in any of the stages at the moment is DevOps. Not that DevOps is a bad thing, but it's something we see is quite polarizing. So some customers are very interested and engaged with working in a DevOps style, and that's very much where, where, where they want to be. Other customers much later. So we see some customers where DevOps is highly appropriate for day one for them. Other customers, it's much later in their journey of where maybe DevOps is appropriate for them, and it may be never. So a whole spectrum. So when we looked at what would be a good baseline recommended implementation sequence, DevOps didn't fit neatly um, because it's highly customer contextual. So that's one of the things that you won't see popping up here. But what you will see is very much that service orientation in the, the box of the bottom, along with the machine learning capabilities coming in. So predictive intelligence and now task intelligence um, provides uh, excellent capabilities. And when you take those capabilities and link them into things such as service operations workspace with the agent assist, the similarity engine coming through and, and uh, the knowledge as well, then that really does drive an enhanced experience for the agent and therefore improved um, improved capabilities for them to resolve customer problems. Um, virtual agent, uh, again, conversation interfaces. Um, we haven't, virtual agent is one part of it. Um, obviously things like Microsoft 365 integration, which has improved in Vancouver again. So it's not just Teams. Um, it allows things like employee center to be shown within Outlook. Um, messages. So the whole conversational interface part um, is really should be considered at this point in time. And we talked a little bit about the whole multimodal uh, change as well. In many ways, the walk stage reflects the, the sort of ITSM Pro licensing. Um, hence, that's why a number of these things are linked to here, such as performance analytics. Um, you can see on the, the right-hand side, we've got a number of the, the item features which have come through, um, such as the certification ACC for monitoring now, um, which was, uh, it was just ACC for visibility before. Event management really helped manage that estate. And I think event alert along with machine learning can be really powerful in helping drive that side of the business. You know, probably around 6% of incidents are machine created rather than just um, people created, which is around 40%. So yeah, having the automation around event and alert really does pay significant dividends. As we move on to the, the run stage, um, you can see that as we move into the run stage, it's more about enhancing those capabilities. It's using the data that's available along with some of those AI and just picking out some of those things. So Health Log Analytics is a great tool for that investigation and looking into the logs, uh, able to identify anomalies in the logs um, because of that. 
Um, cloud been far more prevalent with um, things like Azure and AWS um, coming in at this stage. SRO, SRO as a um, you know as a discipline um, is something I think we'll see more and more of um, as an aspect within ServiceNow and continuous improvement management. For me, I I'd love to see CIM as something that you almost start off with day one so you can collect, refine, and publicize all those improvement activities. So if there's opportunities to pull that forwards, you know, for me, I would definitely strongly consider that because it's the thing that it's going to give you that common register of improvement activities because as you go through this journey, you're going to be exposed to a lot of capabilities and a lot of options to um, work through. Then finally, Fly, which is almost Nirvana. Um, it's a point where you know, you're really into a full-blown refinement. And we've got workforce optimization. It's a, it's a great tool. It really sits on top of advanced work assignment in a number of areas. Um, but it also has other capabilities, such as coaching within there. Um, it's been enhanced quite a lot, especially for managing a team of teams. So, you know, we see a number of our customers, which might have regional teams, then they'll have those regional teams bundled together into a larger team. So it's had features added to provide that sort of capability, along with really um, that skills level, managing the skills, driving those training and coaching opportunities through things like service operations workspace back to those agents to close the loop and help them improve process optimization, which is now process mining in Vancouver, um, is, is there. Both workforce optimization and process optimization are in the ITSM enterprise license, but we're also separately licensed now. So you, there's an opportunity to pull forwards in those capabilities. And finally, benchmarks, benchmarks and success dashboards go together. They are slowly um, becoming, I would say, interdependent. So from su success dashboards, you can look at for benchmarks and how you're performing and you can jump from benchmarks to success dashboards. Um, that's really giving, in some respects, a unique perspective on not just only your own performance, but how you perform against your peers. So a very strong way of looking at how that goes. So that's for the recommended implementation sequence. And as I've gone through it, really it's there to give you a framework to build a discussion, to build a sequence that's right for your business. And it's about taking those existing products. It's about delivering them in phases and ultimately, you know, recognizing where the customers actually jump into it. So, you know, you're gonna have some, you know, some things could be um, at the walk stage, others could be at foundation. So what are the hotspots and, where are the, um, how do they link ultimately to the, the capabilities? And one of the things I just wanted to talk a little bit about is just the sort of the next layer down. So the global solutions framework, um, which is readily available. And we touched on some of these in terms of business capabilities, you know, driving down your costs, better employee experience, optimizing, become more efficient all touch into the service operations space and all driven from ultimately the imperative, which is to automate, optimize your service operations. One of, one of the nice things about this is it helps think about from a business perspective, some of the things that you're trying to do. So the KPIs are, you, you want to reduce the human capital or the time taken uh, and some of the use cases that are going to help you drive for that. And I mentioned 
you know, the path through. So when, even when you look at that recommended implementation sequence is it's a huge amount of potential technology that you're looking at. But again, understanding those objectives, how they, how they look is important. So you can see here in many ways, this is um, taking those three parts that were in the GSF. So the, the technology, the experience, and the optimization. And um, regardless of where you want to end up, the majority of the journeys in service operations have a, have a common core set of activities. So that foundational part, which is about laying the foundations and even into crawl, laying foundations with many of your common, um, common applications um, to gain a set of common objectives, you know, is, is pretty central. And then ultimately it's about then driving through to what are your objectives. And you see here, what we've done is taken, almost taken that recommended implementation sequence and taken a step down. So we've tried to say, highlight, against that what some of the things which are ultimately important and use that to illustrate in this case we want to drive employee experience through use ai so those um, conversation interfaces and that's going to also help improve um productivity again these it adoption blueprints are in two areas, one they are the adoption blueprints, which are inherent within ServiceNow instances today. So if you go into adoption, the adoption blueprints within ServiceNow, these are essentially codified into the instance and give a a, a much more richer view because they they are being shown against what's installed on that instance, what data they have. Um, but also available on now create. Um, just a very quick reminder of there's a wealth of um, content available. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, there's a whole raft of um, things like uh, improvements been done recently to the training um, with the Rise Up program. Um, so please, if you're not familiar with that, uh, go look at it. Um, things like Now Create recently had a makeover. So if it's been a little while since you've been into there, there's a range of improvements occurred to that. It's just about on the release uh, of all the new Vancouver stuff. So please have a look at there. So finally, just to wrap this up, um, is... What, what are the, the four things to really think about in this? Well, you've got to drive from business outcomes, driving from the technology. The technology is a means to achieving those outcomes. So don't reverse it around what the outcomes are and ultimately making sure that those outcomes are measurable, linked to the company objectives is going to help you then understand about what the technology required is. <clears throat> Service operations itself <clears throat> is existing product. It's not it's not new, but it's about maximizing the value from those existing products. There's just too much to do in one go. So understanding, building a journey from that information repositories that are showed in terms of recommended implementation sequence and the adoption journey is the things that's going to help you do that. And keeping that in context is what, where is the customer at? How mature are they? How good is their data? How does that link to their objectives? All those are business orientated questions that should start with. Um, and that's going to make sure that you're able to be more successful and measure that success as you go forwards. So I will I will talk to my colleagues. I will make sure that um, obviously everybody who signed up um, is made aware of 
where the presentation is and uh, recording. Um, so thank you all for your time and um, have a great rest of your day.